Another method that we'll use to get a behavior is called luring. Luring often uses a piece of food or sometimes a target, which is um, an object that they've learned to touch their nose to. It can be a stick or a piece of paper or something else. We'll talk more about targeting in another video. But luring is using one of those to manipulate the animal into the position that you want. So let's say you wanted to teach a cat to sit. You might have a piece of food in your hands and you would put it up toward their nose as they're standing and then you would raise it between their ears and toward the back of their head. And with most animals, they'll follow it with their nose and as their head goes up, their butt tends to go down and you get a sit behavior that you can click and treat. The problem with luring is that you do want to remove that lure within one to three times of using it. So you might practice with a lure in your hand, say the food treat, up to three times and then you would no longer have that food treat in your hand. Instead, you might just have the hand motion and you would reward from your other hand. And the reason for that is that if you do it too many times with the lure, the lure becomes part of the cue, which might be fine depending on what your needs are or perhaps you don't want that. You might have heard people say, well, my cat or my dog only sits for treats. And often that's because they haven't learned how to fade away that lure quickly enough. Here's an example of luring a shelter cat, Muffin, to get on a stool. Muffin already knows how to target or follow an object, in this case, this green chopstick, with her nose. We're not clicking for her to touch the chopstick this time around, though we're just clicking for her to get on the stool. We're using the target or the chopstick as the lure. And then we'll work on fading away the lure, but we've offered a hand signal instead. And this hand signal might become part of the cue.